Hello everyone, I'm Robert Kemeny with Network Consulting Services. Today we're going to talk about Imperva's Web Application Firewall. Today your application server might be in your DMZ behind a traditional network firewall along with your DNS services. In order for us to onboard Imperva's WAF, it's a very simple and efficient process to put that in the middle of that stream. As you provide services to your customers, you're also inadvertently uh, supplying malicious actors or bad bots with access to your perimeter services. By onboarding a site with Imperva's Cloud WAF, we're able to protect against that malicious traffic and mitigate things like DDoS and bad bots. We can onboard a website fairly easy and efficiently by understanding if your origin services use SSL. Uh, we recommend SSL as a best practice, obviously, but in order to inspect that traffic, we're going to need to decrypt that traffic. So we can either onboard your site using a custom certificate that you may have today uh, and put those keys into Imperva's cloud WAF service, or if you'd like them to provide a certificate for you, you can onboard having them create one. Once you've validated your domain ownership, your uh, application is onboarded, and we can begin those customizations in the console. Let's go take a look at how this is done. All right, so here at the console, we're gonna go ahead and get logged in to do our demo. So if this is the first time that you're logging in, you're gonna to wanna to go to myinperva.com to get signed in. Obviously, if you've been there before, you know how to do that. Once you're signed in, we're gonna to go to our Applications tab, and under our websites, we will see the list of ones we've already onboarded. If this is the first time you're doing this, it will be empty, obviously. In the top right corner here, we're gonna click on Add Website. This will launch our wizard that will help walk us through getting our site onboarded. So we're gonna go ahead and enter our FQDN here for the site that we'd like to onboard. Then we'll click Add Website. And what this will do is go through and verify our origin IP. It will verify the protocols that we're using and prompt us for what kind of certificate we'd like Imperva to generate for us. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and choose the full domain SAN and click Continue. Next, it's gonna tell us a little bit about how this is gonna work, how it's gonna proxy our traffic and how it will use the Imperva certificate at the beginning of that transaction with your clients for the initial handshake, and then proxy that traffic to your origin servers. Uh, we do want to use our own custom certificate uh, that will allow uh, non-SNA uh, SNI clients to connect to your website. So we'll do that at the next stage. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and click continue. In order for us to prove ownership of our domain, we need to do a text record validation. And they will give you this information that you can put into your external zone to validate ownership. Or if you'd like, you can also choose to do it by email. Uh, that will use the uh, email of record in your registrar. We're gonna use the text record option. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna go over to my external zone and add a new text record. simply by putting this in here. Store one. Go ahead and click accept. Switching back to our tab, we can then click that we've added our text record. And it will just take a, a couple of minutes to validate that uh, domain ownership using that text record. Looks like we get a message here that says certificate approved. Hopefully that means that our text record was validated. It was successful. So we just had to wait that couple extra minutes. We'll go ahead and click continue. Uh, and it will give us the new CNAME record that will change in our external zone so that all of our clients traffic now runs through our Imperva web application firewall service. So we're gonna go ahead and click done here. It takes us to our website settings of this particular site. Uh, and here is where we can now continue to upload our RSA custom certificate. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on configure. We're gonna upload a new certificate. I'm gonna pick my PFX file. We do support PEM and CER file types. Uh, I prefer the PFX. I think it's easier to have everything with your intermediate certificates bundled together. Go ahead and click open here. Oh, I didn't select it there. There we go, open. Uh, it will ask for our password for our PFX file. Next. 
There we go. That validated the certificate. Once that's been validated, we'll go ahead and click finish. And now we can see that we have our certificate being displayed, our custom certificate. If we'd like to look at details of that, we can certainly do that and see it expiration date and the SAN that has been used in that particular certificate. Uh, the next thing that we need to do, if you remember that they gave us a C name that we needed to update just to make sure that our traffic runs through that, um, we should be able to view that in the general settings page here. Uh, right here. So if we scroll down and we look for D DNS settings for Imperva, you can see the new C name value. So we're just going to copy that right out of here. We're going to go back to our external zone, find our original record for our store right here. And instead of its origin IP, we're going to modify that to be that new C name value. Oh, uh, actually that's wrong. I'm sorry. It's, we can't modify an A record. We need to create a new uh, C name record for it. So we're going to add that new C name uh, right here. C name record host is store one and our target value right there. Uh, and then we can go ahead and remove um, our original A record so that traffic is forced to go through in Perva's cloud WAF. Okay, perfect. Our site has now been fully onboarded. We could validate that by coming back to our websites. Waiting for that page to load. And then we'll find the particular site we just onboarded and validate that all of our DNS changes have taken effect here. We can specify, if clicking on this triangle here, we can specify to check again that those records have been updated. Sometimes it can take uh, up to 24 hours for uh, DNS to populate globally. Uh, so be aware of that in your configurations. Um, other than that, the next steps are to configure your customizations uh, and how you'd like to implement CloudWAF services against your particular site. That is a topic for another discussion. Thank you.